yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, I had my mute, uh, mic on mute. So I was just reading from Second uh, Peter, chapter three and verse uh, verses seventeen and eighteen. So Peter's warning the believers, like right? saying, "You therefore, beloved, right?" Is warning all the believers, and he's saying, "You be careful. You know this beforehand." You know, he's talking about be diligent to be played, uh, seen by him, be found by him uh, in peace, without spot, without bla uh, blame, and so on. And then he says, "You know." Uh, you be careful, beware, right? Lest you also fall from your own steadfastness. What is steadfastness? You know, being uh, uh, being established, being firm, being consistent, right? In the spiritual walk, being steadfast, right? So he's saying you is uh, is alerting them that there is a possibility of falling away from that steadfastness. Right? There's a possibility of moving away from that. From that consistent spiritual, strong spiritual walk. So he's saying, be aware. And what is the antidote that he gives? What is the what is the secret to being a walking steadfast? That's found in verse 18. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So this is a very important thing for us as believers um, uh, to continue to grow because there's no end to not end to his knowledge right there's no end to his grace there's no end to the knowledge of the, the lord jesus knowing him right uh, not just knowing about him information about him that is also there also just knowing him personally right there's no end to that because he is infinite right so he's saying just continue to grow and if we continue to grow we will not fall away from that consistent spiritual life. Now, if you read First Peter, Second Peter, Peter is actually writing and he gives a lot of um, you know, spiritual input, revelation about continuing to walk strong. Okay, I, I know this is the last uh, you know ses uh, session for this semester for the uh, you know for this class, Holy Spirit. So, uh, I just want us to uh, alert us to this fact that the secret to having a consistent walk with God is to continuing to grow. Okay, the minute we say, okay, I don't want to grow, I just want to plateau off, I just want to, you know, stay where I am. There's no staying where I am. There's no staying where we are. It will only be drifting away. Okay, so, um, you know, Peter talks in both the epistles, he talks about continuing to grow strong. Right? So let's pray and say, Lord, may my hunger never be, uh, never be quenched. You know, that fire, let it never be put out. Okay, let's pray. You pray in your own words. Uh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Yes, Lord, our desire is to grow in the grace. Our desire is to grow in the knowledge. Because there's no end to knowing you, Lord. You are infinite in your grace and infinite in your knowledge. And Father God, even as we continue to pursue you, even as we continue to journey with you, may we continue to grow, Father God. Grow in the grace, grow in the knowledge, and be strong in the grace, and be strong in the power of the Lord. Lord, and uh, I just pray for every person in this class, both online and in person. Lord, I just pray that uh, each one of us will have a consistent walk with you, Master, because that is your desire, and that is your will and wish for each one of us, God, that we will continue to go on strong and fulfill the destiny and the plan and purpose that you have for each one of us. And may we be found faithful. And Lord, may we be found joyful God, while doing this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Okay, so we come to the final sessions, final couple of sessions, and we're going to look at um, you know uh, some of the things. Um, I know even though we finished our tests, our exams and everything, um, the last few things that we want to you know look at maybe you have some questions we can look at it in the second uh, session right okay so uh, we are looking at gifts of healing working of miracles uh, and the final one gift of faith okay gifts of healings if you see that's how it is in in the english uh, which is translated from the greek that is how it is mentioned you know 1 corinthians 12 uh, if you see that list it says gifts of healings okay so which means that there are different kinds of healings which means for different kinds of illnesses different kinds of uh, you know things that are not right okay with the body with the mind 
okay, different kinds of healings and also different ways in which it is ministered. So gifts, healings, the different kinds of healings and the different ways in which the healings take place, healing takes place. So gifts of healings. Okay. So if you look at um, gifts of healing, so we see it's a supernatural work of the Holy Spirit, okay, supernatural work of God. You know, can our body heal by itself? Yes, it can. So the way God designed our bodies, like when there's a cut, you know, normally if you're a healthy person, if there's a cut, you know, it bleeds for some time, then it actually stops and starts to heal. The tissue starts to repair itself, right? That's how God designed our body, right? When you have a fever, that means it's a symptom of some infection. The body is actually fighting the infection, and that's why we have a fever, you know, temperature increases because the body is actually fighting the thing. You know, so um, so we know that the body can heal. That's how wonderfully God designed our bodies. Right? But this is not referring to that natural healing process. It is a supernatural healing. Okay, whenever we say gifts of healing, it's a supernaturally imparted spiritual gift for that moment, for that particular need. Okay, so that is why we call it gifts of healing. So it's a supernatural work of the Holy Spirit. It could be, you know. Uh, Things could be wrong in our bodies because of various reasons. Because of sin, the original sin, the whole creation is corrupted. Right? The whole creation. If you see even you know, trees, plants, everything, there is that sense of corruption in it. Right? Our bodies also. You know? So it could be that sometimes we are born with some defects. Okay? So we call that you know, something that is passed on. From our parents, maybe we are born with some things. We are born with, you know, uh, it, that's not how God intended, but because of sin, that's how it is. Because of you know the weaknesses in the bodies, that's how it is, right? Uh, so we could be born with some. It could be something genetic. It could be it could be because of neglect of our bodies, right? Uh, we neglect our body, and then we we fall into all kinds of problems. You know, people go and smoke or whatever, do drugs and all that, and then it affects the body. Right? So because of that, there could be something wrong with the body. Or it could be because of you know, some accident, something, something that we overlooked, and it happens. Because of neglect, because of intentional misuse of the body, it happens. Abuse. Right? But in all these cases, God is able to supernaturally bring about healing. Okay? And we see that. We see these examples in the Old Testament. Right? See the, uh, and we read about... Um, Abraham praying for Abimelech and for his servants and so on, uh, and the entire family, you know, they, are, they, are, they were actually barren. Childlessness was a problem, and then Abraham prayed, and they were, you know, they, they were healed. And uh, Old Testament, if you want to look at examples, there are many ways, many ways in which God brings about the healing. God, in fact, reveals Himself in one of the covenant names. What is the covenant name? Where He reveals Jehovah, Rapha. He says, you know, I, this is my name. This is how I'm introducing myself to you because that is what I do. Right? The covenant names of God talks about the character of God, okay? the, the nature of God. So he says, I am Jehovah Rapha. I am Jehovah you know, um, Jireh. I'm the provider. So this is what he does. This is who he is. So he comes and he, you know, he does what he does best. That's his nature. So in the covenant names of God also, he says, you know, uh, when he led the people of Israel, he talks about how they did not fall ill. Right? When they were living in obedience, they did not fall ill. He talks about how their feet did not swell when they walked in the desert. Right? So he talks about that. Another example, uh, Elisha and, and Naaman comes, Syrian comes for healing, and, and uh, he, Naaman does not have faith. Right? Naaman does not have faith. Uh, he says, you know, there are better rivers in, my, in, the, in the nation where I come from. You know, why should I go and dip myself here? He, in fact, does not have, even have faith. And, and then we, f we see that he obeys and he is healed. Okay. So um, one thing that we need to understand is it, when it comes to gifts of healings, you know, uh, or maybe we just back up, when it comes to healing, healing takes place broadly in, uh, in different ways, okay, different categories. How? You know, I meditate on the Word of God, 
right? I receive the word of God, I read, I meditate on the word of God. And what does that result in? That results in something called something called huh? you grow, huh? yeah, you grow. Yes. But when you meditate on the word of God, when you something happens. Hmm? Living waters flow. Okay. How does okay when we hear God's word over and over again, we take God's word intentionally. What happens to us? What do we what is created in us? Faith. It's very simple, right? Faith comes by hearing, by hearing the word of God. Right? So faith is produced in us. So when faith is produced in us, we are able to receive whatever, you know, receive healing by faith. Right? So we, um, you know, there's a lot of unbelief, there's a lot of questions, but we read the word of God, we meditate on the word of God, and um, faith grows, right? and we receive by faith. Okay. Second way, you know, God, uh, second way by which healing happens, it could be uh, because we, um, because of what we are studying right now, which is gifts of healings. Right? It is, well, the person, the recipient of who needs healing does not have faith or may not have faith, need not. But it happens because of the person who's praying or ministering, who's praying in faith, who's ministering in faith, and the gift of healing, gifts of healings, works through that person. God uses that person to minister, right, to serve the other person, to take care of the healing need or the, you know, the need to heal that sickness in the other person. So it could happen because of that. Thirdly, we also see that it could be in an atmosphere of God's presence and God's glory, where nobody is praying, right? Nobody is praying for a person to be healed. That person themselves, they are not praying, okay? But it just happens because that they are in that presence of in the you know presence of God and they're glorifying God and the manifest presence of God brings about healing. Okay, so um, so that's what that's what we see. The power of God, it says you know, scripture when we when we read the, through the gospel, it talks about the power of God was present to heal. Right? So power of God to press all kinds of sicknesses, all kinds of ailments. So healing could take place in all these things, you know, different ways. So um, so we are talking about the second category where it's gifts of healing because of the anointing of the Holy Spirit, right? Supernaturally brought about. Okay. So we saw some Old Testament examples. New Testament examples, there are numerous, right? In the ministry of the Lord Jesus. He taught, he preached, he healed. We see examples in the in the church, the New Testament church, in the book of Acts, what we read right through, the disciples continued to do what the Lord Jesus did and continued in that ministry, right, in supernatural ways of healing, deliverance, and so on. Okay, so we see a lot of examples, both in the old and the new. Okay, so how does the Holy Spirit, like we study the other gifts, how does the Holy Spirit initiate this release of healing? Okay, so that's something that we need to understand. How does the Holy Spirit initiate? Okay, so um, the best thing for us is, okay, to continue to pray and expect and say, Lord, you know, there is this need. I'm sure there could be this need, but Lord, you intervene. Right? So for us, it God reveals, He gives us a sense of what He is doing. Okay? So there is a sense of knowing that yes, that God is going to heal or God is healing, bringing about healing, okay? a releasing of a sense, a knowing. Um, like, um, like even in, in uh, Peter's case, like Peter was... Um, Talking to Aeneas, a man who was paralyzed, a man who was, uh, you know, he was uh, for several years. So, and then he sees him, and then he says, he has a sense of something that is happening. He says, Jesus the Christ heals you, is healing you now. Jesus the Christ. So, he, Peter had a sense of something that is happening to Aeneas. That the Lord is healing. So how did he know that? You know, through your spiritual senses, like what we're talking about, right? Being sensitive to God. God reveals that I'm healing. I'm bringing about healing for this person, right? You know in your spirit. Okay. And it could also be, secondly, through words of knowledge. 
Okay. So there is a word of knowledge. What is a word of knowledge? We just finished the test. So what is a word of knowledge? Information about the past. It could be about the present, right? Something, information that is supernaturally revealed. So you didn't ask the person, you didn't have an interview with the person and say, okay, what is wrong with your body? But God put it in your heart saying that this is it. right? So through a word of knowledge. And why is God giving uh, that information to you? Saying that there is somebody with this condition in this place. Why do you think God is doing that? Why does God give that word of knowledge? That is the only way to? Talk with us. Huh? No, no. Uh, I'm saying, like, see, okay, God gives this information about somebody's health issue, health challenge, right? About somebody's sickness. Now, why do you think God is revealing that to you? Let's say, Anand, okay, you get a word of knowledge, okay, something's wrong with this person. So, why do you think God is purposely revealing that information to you? Sorry, he wants us to co labor with him, Prince? Yeah, correct. But why? You're saying, why? what is God's intent? Why should he do that? He wants to, okay, co-labor. He wants to work. That's why he is, you know, revealing to you. Huh? He wants you to have faith. Okay. God cares. In what way does God care in this particular situation? God knows what they are going through. God knows already. Okay. Will it stop with that or something more? What is that more? <laughs> That God wants to do what? Yeah, <laughs> that's the thing. <laughs> that God wants to do something with that sickness. That God wants to deal with that sickness, deal with that problem. See, that person knows already. That person is unwell. You know, he's been having a morning for the evening. He's coughing, coughing, getting up, coughing. He knows that something is from problems there with the lungs. Right. So what is the purpose in saying, hey, I think you, you know, God is saying that there's a problem here. What is the purpose that God wants to bring about change, his healing into a sick person's body? Okay. So the word of knowledge uh, is also one way by which God brings about the gifts of healing. He wants to. Uh, okay. So first thing, there's a sense of knowing, then the through words of knowledge. It could be in recognizing uh, healing presence and anointing. And also it could be because of people's faith and expectation. Like Peter and John, when they go to the temple, they see this person who has been sitting there for a number of years. He's, he's been there. He's born that way. But Peter and John look at them. Peter looks at him and then he sees that he has faith to be healed. Okay, there is expectation and faith. He's, he's in listening. And then he has that faith. Right? So it could be all these ways, or we looked at four ways by which the Holy Spirit initiates this gift of healing. Okay, so what do I do now? Okay, I've received this information. I get a sense that yes, God is about to do something. What do I what do I do? Right? How do I co-labor? Okay, let's look at um, how to release, in other words, how to release this gift. Okay. God wants us to declare what he's doing. Okay. So that's the thing. Peter does that, does that, right? Peter does that. The Lord does that. You say, you know, at the pool at Bethesda, that is it. Rise up, get up, uh, take your bed and walk, right? To declare what God is doing. Okay. So, so to declare, what does it mean to declare? To proclaim. Okay. Declaration is different from petition. Petition is asking. Lord, won't you heal this person? There is a place for that. We need to, you need to do that. Pray, ask God to heal. But this is different where you get the sense that, yeah, God has already revealed, so you declare it. Why has it why is it revealed that you know God's nature? 
you know his covenant name is to bring about healing so you declare healing over that person in the name of jesus with the authority that he's given you by the blood of the lamb right you declare healing and say be healed it's not me who's doing it it's not my strength but it's his strength so in the name of jesus right he is the name that which means that he has placed you there as a substitute to do things on his behalf so declare release further words of knowledge okay as you're declaring maybe there's some more information that god is giving okay um, about things that are happening things that are changing you release that as well words of knowledge and faith and prayer oh, um, we see that god uh, you know, in, in the, the Lord Jesus in the Great Commission, he says, they will lay hands on the sick. Okay. So you're sovereignly, I mean, uh, you're praying from a distance, but then if possible, you know, if it's culturally okay, etc., et you know, laying hands on people. In James, the last chapter, we say, we see that the elders anointed with oil and prayed. Right? So in all these ways, laying hands, anointing with oil, praying, and uh, commanding healing right so we see that in all these ways the gifts of healing is released okay so uh, like i said like we are learning about the prophetic we're going to learn about healing and deliverance um, yeah i see all your responses thank you all right so god wants to you know use us to bring about healing and deliverance and so um you know, we're going to spend a lot of time on whole semester on healing and deliverance. Okay, so it's going to be a very detailed uh, study, emotional healing, etc. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. The next one is working of miracles. Okay, so how is healing different from miracles? Anyone? Similarity, both are supernatural works. Right, so difference? Huh? something that is impossible okay so healing refers to something that is um, pertaining to our body or our mind okay but miracle goes beyond that okay it could be something to do with our bodies right healing like for example let's say <clears throat> somebody is suffering from wheezing asthma right? breathing difficulty and god can heal that person and god will heal that person right i got healed of wheezing Many years ago, some two decades ago, or maybe I think it's more than that, right? Instantly, in one night, got healed. Right? And that never reoccurred again. Healed completely. So that's a healing. But what if a person, let's say, there's something wrong with their right eye? Okay. And the reason is they don't have a retina in the eye. Because of which they cannot see. Only one eye. This eye is blind. The problem is there's no retina there. Now, when 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 we pray, God does something miraculous. Okay, the person is able to see. So is that healing or a miracle? It's a miracle. It's a miraculous work. Why? Because the retina is not even there. Probably the retina was created recreated it just came into being or that person is able to see without the retina <laughs> right a miracle is something which goes beyond our understanding it's a supernatural thing okay. or you know it could be some you know metal plates disappearing in our body you know you do a surgery and you put some rods there and people pray and god intervenes miracles and then they take an x-ray and that those rods are not there metal plates are not there it could be a creative miracle. It could be something disappearing altogether, tumors disappearing, cancers disappearing, right? It could be, it's a miracle. It's a healing, but it's also a miracle. But miracle goes beyond, you know, physical things about our body. You know, it can be something to do with nature. It can be something to do with our finances. It could be something to do with you know, a supernatural work outside of that, right? Outside of our bodies. Like, um, you know, I've heard testimonies where, um, where this, this meeting was supposed to happen and it was threatening to rain. And, uh, you know, this evangelist, uh, 
uh, and, he, and he sh shared that and we know him personally so you know we can kind of testify vouch for the integrity of the whole thing right so he i think twice i've heard this right he, he just declared those clouds to move in the name of jesus declared it was threatening to rain it, he declared those clouds to move and the clouds moved over the place where it was meeting supposed to happen so it was a miracle a supernatural work of god in another other case you know it started to rain and uh, but when, when when this person prayed and declared right uh, around that venue it was not raining which means the clouds you know that happens sometimes right when you're going you see that okay there's rain happening there but not here it's raining there right some or some, sometimes it's raining here and then you cross over and there it's not raining something like that happened but over the venue of the meeting you know again a supernatural work of god, god just moved those clouds around it's nothing for him right so that's the difference basic difference between healing and miracle it's a supernatural work of god it could be god intervening in nature it could be god supplying things creating things making things disappear right supernatural uh, maybe even supernatural movement from one place to another like we see in the case of philip like we read in the book of acts right what happens when philip comes out of the water he's actually you know ministering baptism to the ethiopian official ethiopian eunuch what happens after the you know you know after the baptism what happens any idea sorry <laughs> You're asking him, <laughs> now, what happens when Philip, uh, you know, he's in Samaria, he goes, he gives up to that Ethiopian eunuch, right? He come out of the water, something happens there. What happens? He, yeah, the Ethiopian doesn't see him at all. And it says Philip was then found in another place. Right? Supernatural transportation. Like sometimes I wish happens you know bangle traffic today actually as i was coming line of vehicles just all the way i said no, I, I don't know if i'm going to make it on time lord sometimes you wish supernatural transportation suppose i you know <laughs> I, i'm just driving and i find myself inside the compound near the parking it's like right god can do it and god has been doing it through the ages he does it right so working of miracles we see in the old testament supernatural supply of oil supernatural supply of uh, you know uh, flour uh, flour you know, uh, for, you know as in dough to make bread uh, parting of rivers right? in the new testament the lord jesus turning water into wine and um, calming of the storm walking on water miraculous catch of fish right? all these are miracles right? miraculous works of god Right? So same way, like we saw in gifts of healings, how is that that you get a sense of knowing that yes, God is doing something. Right? God is doing something, um, and um, uh, and then the signs, wonders, and miracles are about to happen, or it's already happening. God is doing something. Right? So uh, I remember that I think this was. Uh, just before the pandemic, we had a, you know, there was this, uh, during Supernatural Hour, I think maybe you, you may have heard of, uh, you must have watched the video also. There was one of the students, uh, you know, we were, uh, I, I was not there, I just heard about it, and it was during the time of worship, and there was a sense of God doing something, and then everybody prayed over that person. You know, Pastor Ashish was ministering, and everybody prayed over that student, and uh, he, he, his one leg was shorter than the other. And, but as they were praying, as they were ministering, the other leg grew out, right? Um, and then he stood, they measured, they checked with the doctors, it's, it's fine. But right from birth, his one leg was shorter than, that's, the testimony is there on the, I think it's there on the church uh, online thing, you can check it out. Um, so, you know, God intervened. There was a sense, that expectation, that something's about to happen. Right? And as we're praying, and as we're praying for that person, the leg just grew out, and there's a, there's a miraculous work of God. So we know we get a sense that God is about to 
do something, release something. There's a faith and expectancy in everybody's heart. Right? So how do we, you know, how do we minister in this? The same way, like how we minister in uh, in uh, gifts of healings. The same way, right? We declare what God is doing. Right? We release. Um, okay. We release what God is um, already doing in our midst. We command, we declare, right? And also it could be God is revealing some information. He's giving words of knowledge about something that he's doing. Okay, so you release those words of knowledge. Words of knowledge are not meant to be just kept, you know, uh, you're supposed to be either you pray, online, in line with the word of knowledge, or you're supposed to share it with someone, reveal it, declare it. Okay. And, and in some cases, of course, you can, but you're supposed to pray whatever you know he's showing and ask the next step, Lord, what do I do? So word of knowledge through prayer and faith. Uh, one important thing is also you know, uh, getting people to act according to their faith. Okay. Now, I'm able to do some things, or maybe I need to go and check something. I need to, you know, in order to find out, or in order to act on behalf of the faith that is given me in obedience. So, as an act of faith, right? Peter actually stepped out and he started walking on water. Like, what was that? It was a very risky thing to do, right? And it's sometimes embarrassing because, oh, it seems like, okay, he suddenly he started drowning because he lost his focus, he got fear. And, and then the good part is this, both of them walked back. You know, how did Peter get back to the thing? The Lord raised him up and he walked back to the ship, I mean, boat. So we, you know, it's a risky thing, right? For, for us and also for the person, and if you're ministering, it's a risky thing, but it's an act of faith, right? So uh, ask people to check, test. Maybe sometimes people need to go check with the medical person, right? Um, so a working of miracle happens the same. Okay. Just one more thing is that the gift of faith. Okay. Now, this is different, again, from faith, you know, that comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Okay. This is the gift of faith. So what does that mean? That means that the Holy Spirit, when we, when we look at all the gifts, we see that it's the Holy Spirit who is imparting something, who's bringing something. It's a gift. It's a gift of grace. It's charis. Right? It's a gift of grace. Now, here also, this faith, the supernatural faith, comes into us by the Holy Spirit. Okay, now you, you, you may say, okay, I have faith for certain things, but this is like a huge mountain. I don't have enough faith for that. It's like the father or that person was tormented by the evil spirit. He says, he comes and says, Lord, I believe. <laughs> Help my unbelief. I believe, Lord, certain things. I believe you. But there seems to be some sense of unbelief. I don't believe that much. So the supernatural impartation of faith, where we say, oh, I have a level of faith, but this is supernaturally imparted. Infusion of faith, where you're moving. Maybe it's in gifts of healings, or maybe in gifts of miracles. Like it all flows together, it's supernatural. You, you normally wouldn't have done that. You normally won't say such things, right? Um, but then you did it, because there was this great assurance is great faith imparted by the holy spirit okay so that's uh, uh, we see um, things that happen because of great faith i see some miracles in egypt we see uh, the sun standing still and all that in the old testament and in the new testament several examples um, right through book of acts we see that supernatural things happening so we know that uh, gift of faith, it's a supernatural infusion or impartation of faith, which is given by God for that particular moment. Okay. 
and then you 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 don't keep quiet but you are acting out or working in line with what god has put in your heart okay right supernatural work so how do you release faith we speak we act okay you speak out what god is doing we act which means we need to take a step of that you know of that supernatural faith so if, you know we cannot um, just keep quiet and expect things to happen but we need to move out in faith and do certain things in line with what god is wanting us to do okay so it's a gift of faith so we looked at three things were um, I mean, gifts of healings uh, working of miracles and gift of faith right any questions any any questions doubt Okay. Yeah, you have a question, Prince. Yeah. The weather. Mm -hmm. multiplication of food and uh, yeah 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 we can yeah see <laughs> all the gifts are for us and it is the thing is it's not us it's god right mm -hmm. Yeah. In the book of Axum, see, we, we see that um, they're not by name, but it's it says that you know if you. I, Especially if you read uh, Acts 19, talks about uh, unusual miracles, okay, which were through the hands of the apostles. Unusual, like especially it's referring to Peter and Paul and so on, uh, like handkerchiefs taken from their body and then deliverance and healing and happening. So it's not listed, but that doesn't mean that um, that God did not work or God does not work. See, if you, you let's say you move out of that account. And um, you study church history, and uh, you read the accounts of people who have been serving, you know, right through revivals and everything. You see that God has done some amazing things: multiplication, supernatural transportation, uh, amazing things. Right? Um, right uh, so God is not restricted by time or technology. Like sometimes we say, okay, we have, when I have Swiggy and Zomato, you know, why should I, why should there be multiplication of food, you know? But the fact is that um, God is able to do, uh, and Ephesians 3 talks about that, and he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. So that's the nature of God, that's the character of God. Um, so we don't have to limit, you know, if there is a need, and if it is, if only God can do that, God will. I think we need to have that mindset okay. as believers I have a radical mindset saying yeah, yeah god you can do it and and that's the journey of faith you know it doesn't happen overnight maybe there are a lot of things a lot of pessimism a lot of um, you know things that have happened in our lives because of which it's all there you know like like the that the father who brought that um, you know that person yeah so for him maybe he has seen day in and day out his son suffering his child suffering so he's saying lord uh, you know you help my unbelief god and that's a great prayer to pray that's a great prayer to pray you know, god will take us god will change those things in us and the way we believe today will not be the way we believe maybe a year from now or even a month from now because we are as long as we are you know like we saw that last verse 
second peter 3:18 as long as you're growing in the grace grace which refers to all these things and the knowledge right and knowledge is not just uh, information but actually knowing him intimately you know epignosis as long as we're growing in the grace and knowledge of our god um, you know we are going to be changing uh, in faith and expectations and sometimes you know we, god surprises even though we don't have faith even though we don't believe god surprises and it's amazing right when god does that yeah so yeah so he will yeah so regarding healing you faith Yeah. Is it a feeling? Okay. Something happens. There's no breakthrough. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so, so the thing is this: rather than, okay, it's good if God reveals. Okay, it is because of this. Okay, maybe there are some factors that we don't even. Think about maybe certain things need to change. Maybe there is, you know, we don't know. It's it's good not to jump to any conclusion and say, okay, this is, this is why it's not happening. But the thing is, is to say, Lord, this is who you are. So that doesn't change. Yeah, this condition or thing doesn't, you know, doesn't seem to have changed. It seems like a battle that is lost. You know, especially when it comes to people losing their lives because of sickness and so. But in our mind, we should have this, you know, God, you don't change. You know, this is your covenant name. Now, I don't know why this hasn't happened. You know, I believe sincerely with every cell in my body. And that other person also seems to have believed. And it's not just one day, but they've believed for a season and still it has not happened. So to say, God, you know, this is who you are. I don't have the answers, but I'm going to I'm going to move on in life, continue on in life, um, and you know that's the best way. Otherwise, we could become all angry, hurt, disappointed, and say, "God, I don't have anything to. I don't want anything to do with you." And um, and really, it, and then at some point we realize, oh, you know, and then you come back to God, and then you've lost so much of time and you know in the journey and. That's not the thing. We see there are too many questions that only God has the answers. So it's best that we, yeah, we know that one day we will know all these things, right? We will know when we see him face to face. So it's best to trust him, saying, God, you know the answers and I trust you and I'm continuing on in life. Now, okay, uh, I think we have about five moments. Yeah, we have some time. So so this is what happened, okay? For me personally, this is what happened. See, I, I was sharing about how I was instantly healed of wheezing. Okay, that came out of a revelation of the finished work of Jesus on the cross. Okay, so I went to this small church. We used to go to this place in the evenings, uh, Sunday evenings. So went there, and the, that's the first time I'm, I'm listening or hearing about this finished work of Jesus on the cross. Isaiah 53 verses 4 and 5. He carried my pain, my grief, everything. Uh, and at those days, I used to suffer from wheezing because of weather, you know, Bangalore and the, the saying, you know, pollution and all that. So, um, so that night, uh, so the, so I went for the service. I heard this thing that yes, he has he taken your symptom, he taken your sickness. Then uh, that there's this lady who prayed for me, said, okay, he has already taken it. We have prayed, and so now you go back home. Thank God, thank the Lord. He has taken your symptom. I said, okay, fine. Went home, major attack of wheezing. Major attack. Okay, so it just started off. Everybody's, uh, you know, gone to bed. I'm not able to, I'm just, you know, sitting and I'm just, just you know, trying to breathe. And, and uh, then I remembered what this lady said. Okay, Jesus has taken it on the cross. So it, which means I don't have to carry it anymore. So I'm going to thank the Lord. You know, I'm going to put my faith in the finished work of Jesus, what he's already done. So I'm going to put my faith. Lord, I, I believe that you did that. I thank you, Lord. And, uh, and I said, okay, God, I thank you. By your stripes, I am healed today. I thank you. Right. I don't know when I slept. 
morning i just found myself on the couch you know just woke up then i realized that hey i can it's fine and from that day till today it's completely healed completely it's like many years ago i'm talking about uh, it's 17 years since i started serving in church it's years before that so praise god right he is completely healed and uh, things so instantly then there was another condition like for my body like i used to get these um, uh, uh, you know whenever i eat, uh, this, this condition called gout which is painful you not know, joints and everything this crystals form in the joints and it makes it painful so i was reminded of this god you know you did this and so god i believe that nothing's happening same revelation god i'm, I'm just praying god this is it i'm commanding laying hands praying fasting nothing is happening and then i i got very frustrated because here i'm teaching on healing you know this sunday sermons on healing and going back in pain traveling in pain uh, unable to drive sometimes and um, and then one day i was just sitting and asking the lord lord what is this i can't continue like this and the lord took me to another I mean the same scripture where we started off Isaiah 53 verses 4 and 5 it says do you believe this I said yes lord I do and then there was absolute silence <laughs> nothing more from god he just left me there Isaiah 53 verses 4 and 5 I said okay god I'll just stay with this I'll stay with this and progressively from that day I got healed progressively but whenever I abuse the body, whenever I overeat on, you know, binge on meat and certain things, there, there are some reactions. I'm praying that that will also go. But the thing is this, it was progressive. And the Lord left me with Isaiah 53 verse 4 and 5. He said, I've done it on the cross. You know it's an established fact. It's a historical fact. It's a spiritually, it's a given that this is what happened. Just stay with it. So anytime for me is when somebody doesn't get healed or, you know, we pray for people to be raised from the dead um, multiple times, you know, like in, in the ICUs, uh, in the mortuary, you know, at 2 a.m., 3 a.m. in the morning. And when things don't happen, I go back to Isaiah 53, that's 4 and 5. Yeah, there's a lot of disappointment. Yeah, there's a lot of pain, etc. A lot of tears. Go back to Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. Stay there and say, God, this doesn't change. Cross happened. And you don't change. Hebrews 13, 8. You are the same. So I'm going with that. You know? so, that's, um, so that's the place for us to, if, if we keep that perspective, we will grow from faith to faith. Journey with God. Okay, we'll stop here. Take a break and come back.